speaking with Renee Elmers, who is the Republican candidate running for Congress in North Carolina District 2. Thank you for speaking with me today. I really appreciate that you're taking the time to do so. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'd first like to mention... Great. Thank you so much for calling me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd first like to mention that you're running against incumbent Bob Etheridge. He recently infamously was caught on tape manhandling a student who just had the temerity to merely ask him if he supports the Obama agenda. First, to me, that's quite a testament to Obama's agenda that simply being asked if you support that agenda is cause for a violent reaction. But secondly, it's also a kind of clear indication that Bob Etheridge is lacking in judgment, to say the least, and he displays a high level of hubris. Um, and the Democrat Party d tried to defend him, blaming Republicans for a partisan hit job designed to incite a reaction for p political reasons. So I wanted to know what your response was to seeing that display of his. Uh, what do you think it indicates about Bob Etheridge? And what do you think it says about the Democrat Party as a whole, whose statement seems to indicate that asking representatives a question in a representative government for the people, by the people, is a no-no? Well, I'll tell you, um, you are hitting it right on the, on the head. What you have described is, is exactly my feelings, which is that our elected representative, the person who is supposed to be representing his people, when questioned, mm -hmm. will fly off the handle as he did. Now, that did you not think that was – I thought that was a very straightforward question. I thought it right. was a very simple question. I thought the boys were very polite. Mm -hmm. And a simple yes, no, partial, or please just contact my office would have been – sufficient, right. and it made me realize at that moment when I saw it, first, of course, I cringed because it was it was terrible, but the fact that he, you know, that question alone incited such such anger right. from within him, and, you know, now, he, it, what it reminded me of was the many times that we saw that in him last year at some of the health care town halls that were being held. Mm -hmm. We saw that anger come out in him. Now, of course, he didn't manhandle anybody, but he would get his finger pointing and shaking at someone when someone pressed him on a question and, and did not accept his typical um, rehearsed, regurgitated, Democrat Party line answer, right. and um, you know we we did we saw that before, so that was that was one of the things that I was I was reminded of it instantly. Right, the talking points. It, it, that's all they know is the talking points, and if you actually try and question them, and it was a straightforward mm -hmm. question. It was just, do you support his agenda? I, it, to create such a reaction like that kind of shows to me the arrogance that they have in Washington. Um, a lot of the incumbents have. Uh, how dare you, the people, question exactly. us? Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's that uh, how dare you question our authority? How dare you question our motives? Mm -hmm. and, and, and on top of that, it really shows me that there must be in Washington – you know, it must be happening all over the country because to 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 let that light a fuse so quickly, the the Obama agenda must be hurting them. Right. And it must be hurting Bob Efferich. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, so, and the, the 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 point that that I have with it as well is that if you look at his voting record. He does support the Obama agenda. He votes with with Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, <clears throat> and their agenda 97% of the time. And a, a simple yes, I do <laughs> right. would have been sufficient. <laughs> if, if he actually believes in that, then what what was the problem of saying yes, I do? Yeah, exactly. Which you know, it makes you want. Again, I think I think what it the other the other part that it illustrates is the fact that he is two different people. It's the tale of two Bobs. He, there's the NC Bob, which is he's back home in his district. Mm -hmm. He's a good old country boy, very conservative when he speaks. And then when he goes back to Washington, he's D.C. Bob, where he votes very liberally. Right. 
acts one way at home and another way once he gets to Washington. Mm -hmm. And that kind of leads me to why you entered the race. Um, from what I understand, you, you wanted to, when you did, attend the town hall meetings um, about the then-proposed Obamacare legislation. And as a nurse mm -hmm. whose husband is, I think he's a surgeon, I'm sure you're very yeah. knowledgeable in those areas, unlike, you know, our president, who seems to believe that doctors nefariously try to lop off limbs or reap people's tonsils <laughs> for cash money. So, oh yeah, that what? one. That one sent my. That one sent my husband pretty much through the roof. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it sent me through the roof. I said, I must be magic because my whole family's managed to save their tonsils. How did we do that? <laughs> um, but what did you see here during those town hall meetings that encouraged you to not just attend the meetings but to actually run for office yourself? Whatever the reason is, I'm well, personally I glad for it. Well, I'll tell you, you know, back when, when my husband and I really, when we started going to the town hall meetings and we, you know, we went to a lot of the health care rallies that were being held here in North Carolina, you know, we really wanted to speak out on behalf of doctors and nurses because one of the things that Bob Etheridge said repeatedly and, and have quotes um, was that doctors and nurses were overwhelmingly on board with, with this Obama health care reform, mm -hmm. which we knew not to be true. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it kind of went from there basically. You know, I'm, you know, I am a nurse. My husband is a doctor, but we also have a son who's 15 years old. Mm -hmm. We're very concerned about his future. And I know that, uh, that across our country, we have Everyone is concerned about what we're leaving our children with, right. the amount of debt that we're leaving them with, and the Obama agenda, which is setting up basically, I mean, you know, <laughs> the socialistic style of, of governing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is not our America. This is not what the founding fathers um, put forward. And, and, you know, we have a president that wants to change everything. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I have a representative that's more than, more than happy to help him do it. And, you know, I just feel that, that these things have to be taken care of at the grassroots level. If you're not happy with your rest representative, then you have to get them out of office. And so I just, I put myself out there to do it. I'm glad you did. Yeah, his his hope and change, <clears throat> really fundamental change to the entire country, I think. Um, <clears throat> oh, absolutely. So you, with your through your experience and your knowledge of the medical field, you know that the, the harm that will come to the quality of our health care with this new health care bill. Absolutely. Um, can you mm -hmm. elaborate a little bit on that? Can you, what do you see as being? Sure. Well, you know, some of the things that, that, that they have in place right now, of course, we're, we're kind of learning as we go. Right. Um, because we had to pass you know, the bill first really, <laughs> to exactly, find out what was in it, it, right? And we'll all know. <clears throat> well, you know, some of the things, some of the things that are in it and mo um, most recently with, um, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, Donald, Dr. Donald, oh goodness, Ber Berwick, Berwick. Mm -hmm. that was just, yes, that was just put in place that, of course, our president chose to appoint um, during the uh, July recess of, for the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and so taking him out of any of the questioning that would be right. put forward to him, um, he is, he's a known proponent of rationing of care. He loves the European or, or uh, British-style socialist um, medical system that they have there. And, you know, one of the, you know, for most people, they think, well, you know, what's so bad about that if he's the head of, you know, Medicare and Medicaid services? Well, the problem is that physicians and hospitals are going to be paid based on their compliance with uh, the different um, – as in, in fact, I've got it right here in front of me because I just received something in the mail. Basically, it says that they're going to be um, that they're going to be paid by how they abide by a set of quality performance standards mm -hmm. and meet a financial benchmark. And so then they'll be they'll be eligible for incentives paid by that. What is that going to do right. if there are going to be major <clears throat> Medicare cuts and the physicians and hospitals? are making those cuts as well, then, then they're going to be rewarded. Well, that's rationing of care. Mm 